Hello my fellow lifeforms and welcome back. It has been quite a while since my last video. I apologize. Don't worry, Lee Marill. I am doing just fine. I've just been very busy. In February, I started my own business, Sharpening. I am a sharpener. I basically have a box truck with a workshop inside of it that I drive around in like local areas and sharpen hair salon, shears, knives, just really anything not industrial. I'm a sharpener, that's what I do. I also play bass for a heavy metal band called Of The Oceans. We're doing very well in the local area and we just released our EP, so go check that out, it's really good. I also help my parents out a lot on their property. I also do commission artwork pieces, so there's just a lot of going on in the background and I haven't prioritized a new video for you guys in a long time, but today I was sitting around and going, you know what, I don't have much going on today, so why not? Let's talk about something. So the thing I want to talk about today are the casing stones of the Great Pyramid of Giza. I've gotten quite a few comments in older videos of me talking about the dimensions of the Great Pyramid and people were commenting and complaining saying that I don't know the original dimensions of the Great Pyramid because we don't have the casing stones of the structure. They were removed so all we have are the inside skin layer blocks of the structure. So the question is, how do we know the original dimensions of the Great Pyramid? Well, I'm glad you asked. The answer is that we still have well-preserved, intact casing stones at the northern base of the Great Pyramid that you can still see today. When the Great Pyramid was being stripped of its casing stones, that was going on over centuries, but the date given is the late 19th century when they were mostly removed, they were being used to rebuild buildings of Cairo after a great earthquake. The removing of these stones created a pile of rubble at the base of the structure, burying the lower row of casing stones and preserving them until they were finally excavated and rediscovered in the late 1800s. We also find casing stones on the east, west, and south base of the structure, however they have been heavily eroded and you cannot obtain any actual measurements from them. Fortunately for us, there is a row of well-preserved casing stones at the northern base of the Great Pyramid that we have used to determine the original dimensions of the structure at a very high level of accuracy. Not only after their discovery were archaeologists able to get a very close approximation to the original width of the structure, they were also able to determine a very close approximation of the original height as well. I would like to forward you to this video done by SGD Sacred Geometry Decoded. He has done a great job of explaining the history behind the casing stones of the Great Pyramid, the erosion of them, and the reconstruction done in the modern 19th century. So go ahead and check that out right there. He also has a whole bunch of other great content that I know you guys are going to love. I will also leave a link for this PDF down below, which is the official survey done by J.H. Cole that was funded by the Egyptian government. From this PDF you will get the most accurate measurements we have of the Great Pyramid to this day which is still used as a standard. However, this survey only covers the casing stones of the monument. It does not go over other ways of measuring the Great Pyramid. For an example, the Great Pyramid sits on what is called a sockle or paving stones which raises the structure 55 centimeters off of the actual bedrock of the Giza Plateau. There were also cornerstones or socket stones at each corner of the Great Pyramid which added about 5 feet on each side and there is honestly no pictures of any of these online. I cannot find them anywhere, but here's an illustration to give you an idea of what it looked like. So if you ever find yourself having a conversation with somebody who is arguing that we don't have the original dimensions of the Great Pyramid because we are missing its casing stones, rest assured that we do in fact have a very close approximation of the original measurements of the structure because we still have very well preserved casing stones at its base. And from the measurements we have pulled from the remains of this monument, they have revealed an astonishing level of mathematical knowledge, geometrical knowledge, and celestial knowledge that was supposedly completely unknown at the time of the construction by the architects and builders of this monument, according to the mainstream historical narrative that we have been given to this day. I do not believe it to be a coincidence that the builders and architects of this monument just so happened to accidentally stack 2.5 million individual multi-ton stone blocks just right for all of this mathematics to accidentally work out just fine. I do not believe that people who are investigating into this monument and the mathematics behind it are playing with numbers because as the great Randall Carlson once said, you know, the people who constructed this monument were also playing with numbers. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you all next time. Later. Bye.